is where the fun begins. Hello, welcome to the council. We begin tonight's meeting of the council by calling the council to order. Hello to everyone and thank you for joining us. The council's a live Twitch talk show and podcast discussing Star Wars, The Old Republic. I'm Elise and with me are my fellow council members. Redna. <laughs> Sakari. Hey everybody, good to have you here. Magic Ace. Yo, magic <laughs> babies around. <laughs> Um, tonight we're going to be talking about what Star Wars means to each of us. Um, I anticipate that that, that definition um, will be different for all of us. Um, this is partially inspired by, and I'm going to cough. It's That's an odd inspiration, totally to be honest. Legal. <laughs> um, by uh, some of the stories that we got about EA's market um, market research when it comes to Star Wars and how it's kind of influencing some of their decision making. So I kind of wanted to um, see kind of what the flavor was here about what Star Wars means to us since EA seems to have an idea of their own about what that means. So uh -huh. I think it'll be a good show. I'll be interested to hear this from uh, all of you. And we might, we're going to be inviting people in chat to um, give us their take about that. So feel free to drop in the chat, um, kind of keep it short and sweet so everybody can have a chance to pipe in. But what does Star Wars mean to you? And after our live broadcast, you can find our recorded episodes everywhere our podcast will be found. <laughs> See, I told you Magic Baby was around. <laughs> Perfect timing. You can find us on our YouTube channel. You can also check us out on our social media pages, which would be like Twitch or Facebook.com slash Council Sotor. We also have Twitter, which is at the Council Sotor. And we have a website, which is www.thecouncilsotor.com. But wait, there's more. You can also find us on Patreon.com slash Council Sotor. And generally, if you just stick us in any kind of search engine, we'll be there. We promise. But you have to hit the enter button. That's the key. Yes, assuming they're not so terribly shamed of us, they, they don't want to acknowledge our existence. But I think we should be okay. Um, yes, I think this is going to be a fun episode. What, is, what does Star Wars mean to you? It, right, this is the IP in which SWOTOR is found, so I think it's, it's pertinent. I think it's fair, totally. Uh, icebreaker question is the icebreaker that we do every uh, week, pretty much, just to get the, the chat uh, flowing. This one, I thought I'd take a little bit of a different turn since we were um going to talk about star wars it allows me to kind of take a new angle on things so we're going to play a bit of a game here and by the way i would love for chat you you think of your own uh, way to do this as well and if there's anything cool that, that comes up out there then let's uh let's take a guess at, at chats as well um so here's the here's the question we're going to do two rounds of this so it'll be with your first and with your second choices but the question is describe your favorite character in Star Wars without naming who that character is. And let's let the council guess who you are describing. Okay. Now, do is do I need to do a... Uh, I had Magic Ace here first in the list. Do you want to have a shot at it or do you want me to do an you example? You mean like me tell you mine and you have... Like me give a description and you have to guess it? Describe it, but you can't say the character's name. Okay. As in my favorites... My favorite, uh, like, person, or Jedi, or Sith, or does it matter, or both Sith? It's, I'm, up, to, I'm it's both up to you. I kinda, so I can do one if you, if you would like an example, but I'm, I'm happy to wait my turn also. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to let you guys go first while I try to subdue my chitlin. Thank you. Okay. All right, that's fair. All right, Raiden, I hope you got something ready too, sir. I bet yours so is going to be pretty good. Okay, so you have to... You have to. Does it have to be a person? I thought you just had, we're going to ask about. I guess it, I guess it could be a droid. Character. <laughs> Any character, yeah, like like. Well, it doesn't have to necessarily so like be your, your favorite. You could say little... Bin, Bindu on the from Star Wars Rebels. Or... Anyone no, like that little so, guy? So I could lead like with the crevices mm. of Jabba's, like the bugs in his crevices. You know the little guy, <laughs> <laughs> the Kwaki monkey lizard. It could be like that. <laughs> that would be a great. Yes, one. Okay. You... So you have to describe green. them. Okay, so here, here. Green. A green, okay. I think Redna took mine. Yoda. Probably. Yoda. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man. I had such a good I had such a good well, one too. Oh, do that yours. was gonna be mine. At least okay, you do your description. It's we'll rate whose description was better. <laughs> um I would uh, say his is my, life, my life's to uh, to hit um droids with sticks. <laughs> That's great, yeah. Mine. <laughs> oh wait, wait, wait! Like you said, it likes to hit droids with sticks. Okay, that could be two things. That could be Yoda because you said he thought you he took yours, or it could be like an Ewok because they're all beating the droids uh -huh. with sticks. You know? I guess that's true too. <laughs> and then I was gonna say likes to sample Wicked. um food from other places and people. <laughs> and people, so Luke, <laughs> still eat food. Um. <clears throat> Yes, and then my final one would have been likes to live in swampy places. I, I figure somebody would have gotten it. By yeah. That point. But yes, okay. Whose turn is it? Okay, okay, I got one. All oh, right, Matt, no, go no, for it. Sakari, go ahead. No, Sakari, I want to hear yours. <laughs> All right. Chat, I want to see you guys weighing in on this too. Don't uh, come up with some clever way to describe your character. Mm -hmm. My first one is absolutely no surprise to anybody, so I might as well get this out of the way. He was born 84 years before the Battle of Yavin. A native of the mid-rim planet of Naboo, he pursued a career in politics and eventually became his homeworld representative in the Galactic Senate. Some even say he is the Senate. But yes, uh, you are. <laughs> <laughs> my, my favorite character is anybody's guess. Absolutely. Probably. The Emperor. Okay, so who's... who's... <laughs> that literally was so obvious. When you said Naboo, I was like, dang it, that was obvious. Because there's only yeah. like two or three notable people from Naboo that you it's really true. care about. You got Padme, you've got Bail Organa, and then you've got Sidious. So, I mean, like, really, anybody else is just minor characters. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> okay. Um... Bail Organa is from Alderaan. Oh, so, that's true. So that's we're down to two. You're right. Yeah. There's a two. No, there was another one. Where is it? There was another one. There was a senator that they mentioned. Well, technically Jar Jar, but he's a minor character. Jar Jar. What Let's if it was there. Jar Jar? Because yeah. Jar Jar was a senator too. Uh, major minor character. <laughs> yeah. He's so, yeah, he, he, he is... represented the Gungans from the same planet. You know, there was someone else I was thinking about, but I'll remember it later. When this is done, I'll be like, oh, guys, guys, I remember who I was talking about. Okay. Uh, so my person uh, was taken in by the Jedi and... Okay. Had strong family ties, um, turned against the Jedi, and was taken in by the Sith and became a very powerful Sith sorceress. Revan. Oh, sorceress. Xana. Yes. <laughs> okay, so. Xana. Oh, Did you was... take it? That's the card that's coming at you. <laughs> is, that, is that Bane's apprentice? Yes. Okay. I have like four different screen names. In fact, one of, part of my Skype screen name is that. And then I have like a. A Sith consul or a Jedi consular that is dark side, and she's also Xana. So can I can I can I say a confession? Mm -hmm. I knew yours was Xana. <laughs> yeah, you when I wrote this question, I knew Darth yeah. Xana was going to be the answer to your first one. <laughs> yes. Okay, but her character, the reason being, her character gave me the most like intense thought process ever when I read the Bane trilogy. Mm -hmm. At the end, their duel, I was literally dissecting every single angle. I was trying to figure out exactly how she did it and what she did and I was like all into it. So when I made my Sith Sorceress in SWOTOR, right. it was because of her. Yes. So. And you know what? There's wanna... there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's completely awesome. Like that, Because I mean, you see how many Darth, how many Revens do you see running around in this game? Riven and Rivian and all oh, of the... Please, I'm Revan because every, everybody bases it on I'm... Revan. So I think if you like Xana, I think it's... Xana's, totally she's right. my favorite Sith Sorceress by far, hardcore. But I'm definitely a Revan fangirl, KOTOR. Okay. All right. So Elise, do you have a second one for me? If you don't, that's cool. Um, I mean, my second one's going to be pretty... Sorry, there's dogs. Um, mm, mm, um, my second one likes with nerf herders. <laughs> with nerf, does what with nerf herders? Like, oh, oh God. Herds nerfs. <laughs> loves loves nerf herders. <laughs> She's like scruffy looking nerf herders. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Leia. Yeah. That's, somebody had to. So long. Very cool. 
Uh, redness. You can't say nerve herders now. So what? what what's next in yours? He'll say. Nerve. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say uh, dual wielder. Dual wielder definitely, definitely does have the force. Um, kind of. Well, uh, female. Ooh, I think I know. Can I take a shot at it? Finished on the light side, started on the dark, trained as a Sith. Saj Ventress? There you go. Okay. Finished on the light side. I don't think I've actually seen her end, so that's kind of cool to know. The, it's actually one of my favorite of the new canon novels. Is, uh, yeah, Ventress is really the, cool. The book about her. She's like, they actually, they made her character became. Uh, like, I actually got emotionally invested in that book in a way that I very rarely do in books. Like, I'm usually pretty detached reading things, you know, and, and that book I, I really enjoyed. So. Neff offered one in chat. Mine is a blue-skinned grand strategist. Hmm. Rebel Ooh. forces feared him. And, of course, Magic Ace. I immediately Ace. was like, that's <laughs> wrong. Admiral Thrawn! <laughs> right. Also, fantastic trilogy, just saying. Oh, I really liked Jagged Fell, too, actually. I love him, and that is also part of the reason why I hate the new movies is because Jag and Jaina are not a thing because they don't exist in the new movies. Mm. Ah! Yet. Yet. All right, so my next one. No, Ray could be a pseudonym for Jaina. You know, they could <laughs> just be like, oh, this was an alternate timeline. Our bad. We screwed up. These are the real movies. Someone anyway, will wake up from a dream and we'll be back in the, the EU. Gosh, that, <laughs> honestly, that would just restore my faith in Disney. And I'd be like, you got me good, guys. Yeah. You got me really good. All right, so here's my second one. She was separated from her family at an early age and sold to a series of minor crime lords. When legendary pri pri pirate lord Nock Drayen, actually, that's your, your number one clue, destroyed her latest... <laughs> yeah, it was Vet. She and the other slaves were given their choice of freedom or joining up with Nock. She became a pirate, traveling the known worlds and learning to get in and out of places she wasn't alone. I think it's cool that Vit was a pirate. This makes her awesome. I love that she was friends with Risha. I'm just now doing the Risha uh -huh. romance story. Um, and so, like, when she mentions it, and then I, I did the vet romance right before this. So I did vet, the vet romance and then the Risha romance and, like, the intertwined intertwine story. I'm like, ah! Yes, it's very That's artfully done. You have to like get both angles of it. I think it's. Yep. Right. Um, so That's who? You gotta catch up, please. So I think you have another. You have another one to offer us. Magic. Zana was your um, first. Do you have another? Yeah, I didn't anticipate a second one, but I know exactly who I can say something about. Um, okay. So this person was son of an amazing senator and a world-class general and smuggler. This person had a sister and brother. They also had a daughter and a Jedi lover who was also later a queen and, uh, and eventually became a Sith Lord for the express purpose of saving the galaxy for oh, this person's daughter thank you it's jason oh, <laughs> i was yeah. like how much can i go i'm just gonna keep pouring the <laughs> just bust open the book and start reading i was about ready to say luke skywalker <laughs> and ben skywalker went after this person blah 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 i was like i was gonna give you all the details but thank you redness so yes uh definitely uh if chat wants to come up with any more absolutely you feel free to jump in we were just uh concluding our uh i actually have a friend who uh he uh his first Children were a pair of twins, and it was a boy and a girl, and he named them Jason and Jaina. You know, I wanted that so badly, and then after my first kid, and I actually breastfed that kid, I was like, twins, what was I thinking? I was flipping stupid. I was like, I don't care. How <laughs> I was like, no, nah, man, no, nah, I'm good. Kids, kids <laughs> will make you rethink your life. That is. Oh, I was like, good. <laughs> the two I got, I don't know why Han and Leia went for a third. What were they thinking? So, Elise, our straw poll is a little different this time around, so I am told. Do you want to uh, lead us through what you have in mind? Okay, so um, for chat, it's not really a straw poll, it's a chat. It's a chat poll. Yeah, this is chat, true, yeah. Um, 
So um, we already said that the topic of this week is going to be what does Star Wars mean to you? So I'm going to put it out to our participants in chat. Um, why don't you tell us in chat just a couple of words, what, uh, try and keep it short, what does Star Wars mean to you? When, you? when you think about Star Wars, if you were to see a movie or read a book or play a game, what would you need to see for it to qualify to be a Star Wars wow. thing? I love the way you just rephrased that question because that adds so mm. much depth for me, which so, I'm sure I'll unpack um, as I go. So just tell us in, in chat, what, what, what would you need to see for it to be a Star Wars piece of entertainment item whatever wow tell us in the tell us in the chat. because if if i think that way i'm starting to disqualify the latest movies <laughs> from then, from my criteria you know what i'm saying here's what i want in a star wars movie like some of the stuff is missing and i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to rethink some of that interesting i mean that's that's fine again like i said if we go back to kind of what sparked this idea for me was the um uh, kind of what we talked about last week. I mentioned it very briefly last week um, with the cancellation of the um, Star Wars game that was being made by EA Vancouver. Mm -hmm. um, the One of the pain points for them was EA's um, executives saying, well, according to their market research, you needed to have the Force and lightsabers for, for it to be a Star be Wars movie. Star Wars. I oh, okay. And that then their market research led them to that. And so, um, and then another piece is you hear a lot of people just make assumptions that, well, you know, if you make such and such, all the Star Wars community will come. And, and if you put those two things together, I, I, is that really is, is, is the Star Wars community that homogenous, that the homogenized that just anything would, it, they would show up like, they don't have any criteria that they would need to see, you know, and, and is that, is, I kind of think there's some factions there. I think everybody's got a different idea of what Star Wars means. So I would like us to kind of explore that. Okay, today. all right. So, so I think there are some basics we should probably get out of the way because then after that, that's where you really start to get into this. Star Wars, I mean, okay, so it does it count as Star Wars, let's start with the very basic, without the Force and lightsabers. Can it count as Star Wars? So, for instance, let's consider uh, Battle I don't think the lightsaber Battlefront Two necessary. Which I don't think the, the existence of the Force in the galaxy is. I mean, should be necessary, okay. but I don't okay. think that you need to have Force wielders in order for it. I mean, because freaking Rogue One was awesome. They didn't yeah. have lightsabers or Force, and it was one of my favorite ones. It's a it's a used universe. You've got to have like intergalactic travel and you've got to have um uh you know multiple worlds they they don't need to be shown but they need to exist right i mean that's the thing about star wars is that it is something that is effectively all-encompassing right you've got the building blocks of a universe with special magical properties or whatever and fantasy elements it's it's a sci science fiction fantasy environment in in a used gal galaxy. That's one of the key things about Star Wars that made it separate from the rest of the uh, uh, sci fi at the time. Um, okay, so and I think there is some some play. Not everybody would agree with you. So yeah, yeah, clearly. Oh right. Obviously, not everybody would agree with you. So you know, I think teasing that out a little bit and i uh, clearly um i, I think, think orenda think... you have said multiple times that for you it doesn't have to just be force wielding right and lightsabers that you like some of when we get away from that a little yeah. bit I, and explore I... kind of the pockets and the out branches and then there are other people like me which doesn't hate those things but i don't read the books and read the comics because i'm quite happy staying in kind of the middle lane of classic movies and well like, he's clearly not stuff. the only one who feels that way because yeah. there's whole stories like in the mandalorian society Bounty it hunters, was a yeah. shame to have 
um, force powers, same as like the the Hapes Consortium. If someone brought in force powers, they were looked down upon and they ostracized those people. Whereas there, there was other um, people like the Dathomir who they feared them and they became like the witches of Dathomir where they, they lorded over everyone and they had tribes where some tribes were in power and some were not. And the, the Chiss see it as a defect. Yes, the Chiss see it as a defect. So clearly people liking stories not based on force users is not a new thing because there are whole elements in the Star Wars galaxy yeah. or universe oh, that Bosk, that is Bosk so and IG-88. I mean, come on. Like, that's Star Wars, but it's very far from lightsabers, <laughs> you know? Right. So, yeah. So, but it, it, the question is, um, I guess I would have that as Magic Baby also <laughs> has something to say about this whole topic. Um is if that is the case, then I guess my question would be how prevalent do you think it is? How common do you think the idea of, well, it's okay not to have lightsabers and not mm. to have the force in the community if we've got EAA demanding that those things be in a game? Let me add something to the list. Super weapons. How much about Star Wars revolves oh, around no. Death Stars and... You know what I'm so saying? Much Super that I'm with sick to death of the it. The dark like, saber or whatever that was the Huts try to build. Disney, the one thing with Disney taking over is I thought they'll have some fresh ideas. And what do they do? <laughs> Super A weapon. bigger version of what we already had. I was like, really? <laughs> the one thing I was rooting for, and they let me down so freaking hard. It was so frustrating. That whole time in the theater, I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? I hated it. Everyone in the theater I know hated me. They hated me so much. I was so angry. <laughs> well, um, Empire so Strikes Back doesn't have a super weapon, and many people seem to think that that's the best Star Wars movie ever made. Me? That's my favorite one ever. Okay, well, that's cool. Empire Strikes Back. So, I think once yeah. it, once they've tired it out, people begin to want not want a I super think, weapon. You know, give, I'm I'm going to say that I do not believe that super weapons are in any way necessary to a Star Wars movie. However, it is way overplayed in Star Wars movies. <laughs> and the games. And I think, don't, frankly, to yeah. that point, like a, a lot of people, frankly, don't want. Like, they're they're burnt on it. It's like, gee whiz, just let's, no more super weapons, please. Just give me anything else. And I want it in my Star Wars movie to be anything else. Yeah. <laughs> That's Somebody what I like about... The Reddit for Tour was, please don't do another super weapon. Honestly, yeah. my <laughs> favorite thing... <laughs> it was funny. My favorite thing and all the, like, non-force using moments is the like the commandos the republic commandos that broke away before order 66 and or broke away because of order 66 and they ended up like starting families and stuff like that like that's my favorite element of it because you've got these non-force using people that were used by force users to do their dirty right. work basically and then they're like you know what screw that i've been programmed to do this and i don't care and they're gonna go do their own thing anyways yeah, well, I mean, there's definitely large segments. There was an entire X-Wing series, which until uh, halfway through, they didn't have a Force user. And then, you know, like one would kind of show up, but then they ended up spinning out and going their own way. Uh, and I know, like, one of my best friends, his favorite books have anything to do with Mandos and Troopers uh, and basically all of the non-Force user side characters. Mm -hmm. There are books, you know, that really flesh out and develop those whole squads and everything, and he always... Like those were his favorite parts of the books. Uh, yeah. Following the the um, you know voodoo from a bygone era was less uh, <laughs> appealing to, Yo, to him. The the game Republic Commandos. Did you play that? I dabbled with that game? some. I love that game so much. You could command your troopers and everything, and it gave you in depth story the on the leader. commandos themselves. Yeah, the squad. And then there's three novels that goes into it that talks about the squads. They're fantastic. If you haven't read them or played the game and you can, please do. Well, and, you know, the, the flip side of it is there are people that all they want, they don't care about the norms at all, you know? And, and like, the, the witches of Dathomir are, like, they're, you know, getting into the deep Sith alchemy and, you know, even less Sith and more just raw force powers is uh, can be really appealing. That's the thing about Star Wars is, honestly... I don't think that there really is any single um, architecture that is going to please even a majority of viewers. I feel like you're so broken down into 20, audience. 30 percent groups at, at best. Sakari, what else did you want to say? You started with super weapons. 
Was there something else you wanted to say earlier? Well, I'm just trying to think. Well, because we started with with um, lightsabers, we started with the Force, we started with super weapons. Rena, I like your point about having that be the the milieu, right? Have it, that be the setting in which all of this is. So you can have and what what appealed to me, for instance, is in the midst of that. Here's an example. There is a bounty hunter, and he has a team of two or three other pe- like support people, that, and they're going to enter the great the great hunt. And try to win the great hunt. And it's just, it's humble, right? It's just its own little bitty story. It's not about force users. It's just about us and what we're trying to get done. And then before you know it, you're like, oh, I'm sure embroiled in all the, you know, having to deal with the Sith, etc. But I just love how that's just its own little story, you know, in the midst of this, this bigger things. I, have, well, I, I mean, I, what's interesting, too, is I feel like when I was a little kid, what was my favorite thing? And probably at the heart of it, I really do like the... It's the hero's journey, the retelling in a new environment of epic, you know, human tragedy or, or he- heroics, um, mm-hmm. you know, like the the hero's journey being the epitome with Luke, you know, going from farm boy to rebel with the cause, you know, and then uh, uh, and then taking on the mantle of the Jedi in the conclusion and, and fully becoming a man and, and redeeming his father in the process, like. That's freaking fantastic, and Luke was definitely my favorite character. Yeah. Now I probably am much more. I, I appeal much more to Han Solo. You know, the guy that's you know. It's, I want to say Han Solo was, goes through more of a hero's journey than Luke does. Am I fair in saying that? He's the one who grows the most. Yeah, because I would Luke say was already it's raised a less to know traditional. Right. I think it's a of less to, a less um, uh, meaning n- nothing by it. Well, Luke's, Luke's it's a very stereo- stereotypical kind yes. of hero's journey, but yeah, Hans is a little less, is a little less. Um, and it's hard to say he went through a hero's journey based off of recent movies when basically he became a deadbeat dad and yeah, you know gets killed true. by his son. That's uh, true. Okay. I got to give you that. Surely, if you count that, you are correct, Rena. For those of us like me who don't count the new crap, we <laughs> see it as a hero journey. And the reason being because you ruined my childhood. Luke was a child. Because it took dozens Luke. of novels for him to become a genuine man and a father worth being respected. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So, so like, we've seen the progression. We're like, no, it really was a journey. He worked hard for it. It wasn't, like, overnight. It wasn't, like, the next movie. He's like, oh, I'm a hero. Look at my hero hair. No, it was a legit struggle for him because he wasn't raised that way. Luke was a child, and he was raised to do right, yeah. to think what evil is, to see what evil is, and to, to want to fight against it. You see Luke at an early age as still a child wanting to go fight what he sees as evil. Han's like, nah, man. I'm smuggling crap in, I'm skirting the laws, I'm making money. Who cares if I hurt somebody as long as it's not me? So Han's a full-grown man when we see him, when he enters into the picture. So to be fair, his hero journey is a lot more of a hero journey than Luke's. Luke's is more of a growing up into a, Mm. I'm struggling to make sure I don't make a bad choice, but I'm still good. Han's like, no, man, what's good? Actually, according to the new movies, Luke Luke devolves as well, right? They all just fall from grace, except I think... (sighs) I think maybe Leia stays with it, but the, the the guys all just kind of fold. It's interesting what these new movies have done to these characters that, that we, we grew up loving so much. Yeah, they're supposed to be the heroes, and they're like they're anti-heroes now. For me, I think it's I, I especially I guess with younger generations, at least with the ones that I have raised, um, and I watch with my kids the old movies. They find them very kind of false and fake to a point. They're just too. Yes. Everything works out in the end, and blah blah. blah. Like they're just well, too yeah. black and white. Um, they like really with everything prefer... else. Well, though. yeah. So, so yeah. Tolkien, right? So all the good guys are beautiful, much, yeah. and all the bad guys look ugly. You yeah. know, that's, I mean, it's pretty. It's a pretty. But, yeah, but you. <laughs> yes, I gave. I kind of opened. You, opened. <laughs> I set it up, and you spiked well, no, that so, one. Sorry. <laughs> Listen, really ugly. I didn't even like Lord of the Rings as a child, but Orlando Bloom was in it. I was there. Okay, that's how I well, watched Lord of the Rings. Well, all <laughs> like I'm saying said, is, is like there, there. So there is, there is a, a kind of like the the way writing used to be is is they would leverage that, right? Like these evil guys act evilly and they do only evil things. And it's really what I like about George R. R. Martin's writing, the the Game of Thrones stuff, where characters are more complex than that. Like they they do terrible things for good reasons. They're misunderstood. There, there's so much more complexity in characters. I love that's that that's where 
writing for movies has come. So maybe in a way that's a good thing about the new movies, for instance, is that, yeah, you can screw up as, and as an adult and find and lose your way, you know, and, and struggle with it for years. And I mean, Hey, isn't that the whole point of, of Anakin's journey, right? He lost his way. It was years and years and years until, um, he got to revisit that choice. Actually, this is a, vis- a point I want to visit a, get a chance here to unpack some of mine, but you know, you, you get that, that moment where he re- gets to relive a, a moment that he made a, cr- a critical choice and there's redemption that comes out of it. So I think that's uh, characters aren't always inherently good or evil and they just stay the course the whole way. The good guys are the good guys and the bad guys are the bad guys. And maybe we'll see some of this with Kylo Ren. I don't know. Okay, so what, let me, what about factions, right? Because Star Wars is all about the Empire and the Republic. It's all about the Jedi and the Sith. Is that fair? Can we break that mold? And it still counts as Star Wars. Yes, to an extent, in my opinion, because, I mean, the story is built off of sides. You've got the Empire and the Rebellion. That's literally what it was presented and built on. There's the light side and the dark side. And if you don't read the the expanded universe, then mm-hmm. you don't know that they later on go into the gray and unified force and blah, blah, blah. So if you know none of that exists and all you see is light and dark in Republican Empire and then the few independent planets who get basically trampled underfoot, then it's hard to really build much of a story outside of that. Mm-hmm. If you've read into the expanded universe and you know that there are full stories, full novels of things that really are outside of light and dark and they even introduce orders that are not dark or light. It's totally gray and there's literally an entire galaxy with other life that's outside of the force or that doesn't connect to the force. If you don't know any of that stuff, then you would say no, no, you can't have that. But the fact is there actually is Yes, I know. Shh, don't ruin it. Some people need to know. I'm talking about the Yuzan Vong here. Anyways, <laughs> so my point is they do exist. They are there. They're viable stories, and they're much love stories. But if you never read into that, you don't know. So yes yeah. and no. Like, they are there, so clearly they work. But no, because so many people have no idea. Or Mandalorians. I mean, if you tr- if you track some of their history, I, I think that the whole, they are the whole Mando fan base has been severely underserved. In, you know, there's, yes, there's they much more that needs to come out in the... Uh, in the older episodes, the they, they are series. inherently the TV on the show inferior... that they've yeah. that they filmed yeah, how many episodes already. Like the directors have already been there. Historically, that. though, they were usually against the Jedi. They liked to fight against the Jedi because it was a challenge to them, and they usually were employed by the Sith. So inherently, when you think Mandos, you don't think Gray. <laughs> you generally think a little more to the darker side. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's because they're generally mercenaries or bounty hunters. Uh... Yeah. which is inherently on Not the other pretty. side of the law. <laughs> okay, so you guys, I have plenty of material here. I could talk all night. You guys volunteer a some some aspect of Star Wars that you think needs to be reexamined. Um, well, I'm just going to say that being that I am a classic movie fan and a not a book reader, um, that that's kind of where, um, although I would love for someone to bring in maybe some of those branches that I haven't read in the books, but I would like us not to stray exceptionally far down that path um, that I cannot see my touchstone point, which is what has been in a movie or a TV show. Um, okay. That's just me. That, that's just what I No, no, no. This is, this, is, this is good. Because um, <clears throat> that's what people yeah. see, and that's what they want to be a part of, right? Yeah. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be lightsabers in the force. Um, but, you know, I, Han Solo is my other favorite character, and I really enjoyed his little quips and the arguing between him and Leia. Um, Leia was not force, really forcey during the original ones. Mm-hmm. They brought that she in way later. She was force sensitive. Right. But she really didn't do any tickle finger. So um you those two were my two favorites again the banter sex back was my favorite exactly well, so i think that, that, i think that, they that, they, yeah. they they figured out the banter thing right because you've got mm-hmm. what's it l33 whatever you've got uh, all the, the the droids in the latest movies they're all elite elite i know L337. it was elite l337 yeah. yeah what was the uh the droid in in rogue one it's it's some of the banter it's the funny chatter uh, I think okay too yeah okay too thank you 
And I, I mean, and I, of the new movies, I really did actually enjoy Rogue One. That's probably my favorite one. Um, if we're not talking about the exact, you know, the part of the sequels or right. whatever, the episode stories, um, Rogue One was by far my favorite. Um, and I really did enjoy Solo once we got like past the beginning, like midpoint and on. Um, so kind of like none of those. I really enjoyed A New Hope once I got past the beginning. Right. You know, standing in the desert staring at the sun for 20 minutes got a little old. But... <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and uh, again, but... since I'm a video game player, though, I, so I, I kind of diverge from maybe uh, probably a fairly large portion of people, I would think, kind of are in my lane. I buy the, you know, I buy my backpack, my Star Wars backpack, and I got my, spar, you know, my, my, my Star Wars pens uh -huh. and pop dolls, and I, I don't, I'm cool with that. But since I played the video games, I actually do know at least some of the Old Republic kind of stuff. But again, my point of reference is going to be primarily what was in the game. And then when people start going off on all this, like, additional lore, I kind of get lost. But the one thing I would really like to see more of is the Sentinels. I played a Sentinel in KOTOR. I read it. Okay, okay, oh, hold on, hold on. Let's be careful so, here because the way that our viewers who are SWOTOR fans understand a Sentinel may be a little bit different to the way you understand a Sentinel from oh. KOTOR. So in KOTOR, they were like the, um, so they had the yellow lightsabers, right? If people remember mm -hmm. that. It's um, uh, um, Basil Sean, right, is kind of your prototypical, uh, usually when people bring up a, a Sentinel, they bring up her picture from KOTOR. So um, Kind of middle of the road. They, Yes, they so they were not kind of too bad. much force, not too much uh, battle. They right. were balanced, and they were really kind of the um, kind of would go around and like a traveling judge from the West, the old West, American West. Yes. kind of they would they would run around and sail us of disputes. I asked, um, this is where you might want to bring up my my, my Please. kung fu picture. Cue me. Um, so I don't know how Kung old Fu. people are in here, um, but there was a TV show back in the 70s, Kung Fu. There's just so many, like, just racial stuff that goes along with that now, but we'll, we'll glance over that. And, <laughs> and, and, Moving right along. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He would run around and he would solve problems and, you know, and help help dawn, downtrodden people, you know, fight back against the man and solve problems with his Kung Fu. And then he would run away because the man was coming for him and you yeah, know generally that when i solve problems that's what i do i whip out my kung fu yeah <laughs> <laughs> my kids so, are so, arguing uh, and fighting kung yeah fu. it's mama star right there i, I think that would be <laughs> cool though wouldn't it to have like a show where you have a sentinel that runs around and solves problems and that's your episode it's kind of like also like remington steel also was kind of that same deal oh, too. There, there, kind of, there, there, i'm Reigns. so bringing What's... all this like <laughs> man i always pick the consular i wanted all the force shows. powers yeah yeah. Um, no, I, I like always. this idea. Like, like you're, you're, because that class is supposed to be the judge, right? You show up, you're a representative of the Jedi Order. You enter into the situation as a, as a, because everybody trusts the Jedi, they're impartial. So you show up there to help them ferret out the issues and to think things through and to c and come up with a, a objective um, judgment on the situation that is authoritative. I think that's yeah, cool. yeah. Very cool. And then the prequels, they send in, um, you know, Obi Wan and what? You know, the Jedi Bygone murder Jim. mysteries. Thank you. <laughs> My brain's not working today. Bygone to like Jim. do That's the whole Jedi like concert. trade debate, and there's no Sentinels there, and I was like, what? What? Yeah. What? What, that was, what? what they were there to do was to yeah, was to go. Help yeah, I was like, where? and no we can't possibly have them you never see that's the, like, because that would be a wider anyway. arc than they were willing to give you yeah. <laughs> what, what was the other one that they somebody used as a defense was well there's just not that many of them and they're not supposed to be you're not supposed to know that they're sentinels so they hide and I'm just, i mean they have bright yellow lightsabers but you're not supposed to know right so that, that, that's man my favorite I, part is when you're talking to the jedi master and you're on Dantooine, and he's having you like read through your options. You could be this, or you could be this, and you could be this. And I love picking console every time. I was like, I really want a different color lightsaber crystal because I have green everything, and I want something different. But I want to be the console, so I'll take the green. Give me, give me. I know I can change it later. Like that a, was why I did that. Go, go be a yellow. Go be a sentinel. 
No, I like the force bars because you know why? It was only for I advanced like users to the life out of them before they get to me, so I never have to use my saber. No one sees what crystal I have. It's fine. <laughs> That's what I like to do. All right, so, so let me let me volunteer something, and this is something that I actually took a second to wrote down because Redna brought it up. You were saying a new hope. The the part that dragged was the twin sons, right? Stepping out there, staring off into the distance. Oh yeah, Luke. But that becomes a symbol of Luke. Leg up. Okay. You have, to have your leg up on a box. Or yeah, whatever yeah. You've got it. The, the, Cap, the Captain Morgan, right? You got to be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Captain Morgan. Oh, baby. <laughs> so, but but here's the thing I think is really cool, especially in George Lucas's Star Wars, and I'm so thankful that 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 they figured it out and used it with the ending of Luke here in, in the Last Jedi. Okay is the use of parallels. Now, this is, I'm, I'm digging way deep, and I know that other people aren't going to appreciate this probably as much as I do, but but you see Luke, at the very beginning of his journey, stares off at the twin sons. At the very end of his journey, he stares off at the twin sons. I just think that's bookends. That I just, is okay, spoiler, really cool. I didn't know that. No, it's okay. I was never going to watch the movie anyways. <laughs> oh, you'll watch it. It's, it's Trust me. At some point in your life, no, you'll watch it. I know and you'll remember, Sakari, right you jerk, you spoiled it for me. <laughs> So, but no, so, I didn't know that, but that's so fine. So here's a couple slides I made, and it's one of the things that I think is really cool about Star Wars. Like, and this is something I hope we don't lose sight of. For instance, it, 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 with regard to the, the uh, parallels, one of them is um, Leia giving birth to the twins at the same time that Anakin is on the table turning into Darth Vader. There's a parallel that happens. You mean there. Padme? Pa Pad Padme. Yeah, who did I say? Leia. Oh yeah. Okay. Leia, Leia didn't have her father's twins. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so, I, so, so that you know, so you have them. That happens at the same time in the movies, and it sw switches between them. They both go through those or ordeals at the same time. Here's another one for you. The time, and I've already mentioned this, but I was gonna. I said I was gonna unpack this a little bit later, but it's the time for choosing for Vader, right? Um, it, in the very beginning, you know, he's been this Jedi all his life, but there's this pivotal moment that happens where Palpatine is on his back and Mace Windu is standing over him with a lightsaber and Anakin has to choose one. And he chooses the wrong one and that leads to his downfall. And the rest of his life is he, he's Sith, he's, he's, you know, the bad guy. But it's actually one of my favorite mo moments in Star Wars is when um, the Emperor is shocking the fire out of Luke. And Vader looks at looks at Luke and looks at the Emperor and looks at Luke and looks at the Emperor and you he's can like, see Deja even though Vu. it's a, yeah, exactly even though it's a mask, you can tell he's making that choice again. He's reliving that moment, and so he decides to make the right choice, and it leads to his redemption. I think I that stuff Jedi, is cool. I'm gonna be a better father, save my child. <laughs> yeah, he may have been your your what's it father boy, but he wasn't your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway sorry another movie no but no, that's uh, good parallel. But, but it's the parallels that, that i think are so cool in star wars and george lucas knew how to use those um and i was worried that in the new movies they they were and they were essentially gone i mean until i saw luke sitting there in front of the twin sons i thought that was really cool that's what Star that's the cool stuff in star wars to me that i that they don't do in the games because people haven't analyzed i don't know it hasn't occurred to them i don't think to, to do cool things Anyway, so, sorry to take us way into no, the weeds. So No, no. Like, the title of this is What Star Wars Means to Me. So, like, to me, like, for my sum of everything, because basically so far I've kind of just chimed in on what everybody else is saying. Basically, 100% for me, it's endless possibilities. Because okay. it's an ever-expanding galaxy of stories. There's never a shortage of planets to go to. And even if you visit all the planets there's still the possibility that you've missed stories they keep writing because let's be honest they want to make money but <laughs> right. but before disney bought it there was still all the stories and they were still writing ben and uh, alana's story ben skywalker and alana solo story until disney bought it they were writing the continuing story there was a plan in motion you were going to get to see the jedi queen and all the all the expanding stories out of that. You got to see all these the Sword of the Jedi. Yeah, yeah. And you mm -hmm. got yes, yes, Gina, Sword of the Jedi. So you so you got to see all these different angles. And then it really like takes you into the chest and like it really takes you in to like the Cisaruvi. And there's like so many different cultures that you never hear of in the movie. 
but there's endless possibilities. There's more planets, there's more cultures, there's more stuff that we've not seen yet, even though it's not been written, right. but there's still more out there. And it's like, so for me, Star Wars is endless possibilities. Yes. The, and you know what possibilities upsets me stop. about what you just said is that every game that we've ever played has Tatooine in it. <laughs> Right now, now, now I mean, so this is half of what you're saying. Hey, those pod racing, racing, racing though, it wouldn't be the same if Tatooine wasn't there. You had <laughs> right. to have, you had That's to have true. that. But it's like halfway. But, I mean, that goes along with the having to have the force and yeah, and the lightsaber. Tatooine is market research. Is a super so weapon. They have to have, right, Tatooine. I mean, they had to oh, put yeah. it. Oh uh, yeah, another Star Wars essential: Disney. planets that are singular biomes. Yes. You can have a water world, you can have a desert world, but you can't have mountains on the same planet that has a desert. <laughs> That's why they blew up Alderaan because it was a little bit too diverse. You had a little bit of snow and you had a grass. Yep. You know, you can't have those two in the same planet. So you had open grasslands, <laughs> you had mountain areas. There was snow. There was waves. <laughs> right. No, it was too pretty and too earthy for them. <laughs> no, but that's a, that's that's a good observation, right? As well, is that yeah, it's a single biome. This thing's a, de a desert world. Yeah, that's one of the things. Like I know that it's tough on a processor, I'm sure, to do Coruscant. And that's one of the things I really love about SWOTOR is that they did Coruscant. How many other Star Wars games have you done? And everybody knows about Coruscant. Oh, well, it's the capital. But you never go there because they know the game. It's How do they, How are they going to art that out? And uh, SWOTOR did it. That was going it. to be Star Wars 1313. Just saying. Really? But I mean, like, yeah. I, I, to this was. day. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 the lower levels of Coruscant. Yeah. Correct. That's what the 1313 comes from. I mean, to this day, I will step out in Coruscant on, in SWOTOR and marvel at the traffic. I just think it's amazing. Like, or, or the whole world is a city, right? <laughs> I mean, like, if the whole world was a city, like, everybody would be dead because of the smog. Nobody would be able to breathe. No, silly. They have air so, for that. <laughs> so to me, Star Wars was the Strategic Defense Initiative, which was a proposed missile defense system intended to protect the United States from attack. By ballistic strategic nuclear weapons that you know, <laughs> okay explain the star wars program <laughs> anybody he's, he's totally <laughs> pulling something out from the reagan administration <laughs> well, I remember, reagan. you're missing oh, my i remember goodness. who the other person from naboo was valorum chancellor valorum in episode one before he uh, gets yes. voted chancellor out i was like there's one more i remembered okay i'm good so he got voted out by the um, they kicked him out I for was, the junior senator yeah, they kicked him out. <laughs> from I would just like to out. say that I'm sorry, but I trumped you right now because mine is older. Just, just saying. <laughs> All right, the '70s. Yeah. Kung Fu <laughs> is before the Reagan administration. Oh my god. Oh my. Just saying. Um, what about um, what what else? Here's one. What about prophecy? So prophecy plays a big role in in Star Wars, and usually it's the play out of some prophecy. There's one out there who will bring balance to the force. And there's some fulfillment of prophecy. Does that matter? Or the prophecy of the or the, the rule of two, which wasn't really a prophecy, but it was Bane's design, right? Comes up with a rule of two. He's like, okay, this is going to eliminate the infighting between the Sith and allow them to actually get on with business, which is taking over the galaxy. And it works out. So there's a well, direction. Yeah, of course it matters. Like, so the prophecy gave the Jedi a direction, whether they knew it or not. And the rule of two gave the Sith direction and they didn't know it was happening until it was too late. So they both matter because it gave clear direction to both factions. Right. Yes. But is it necessary? Not necessary. For a Sith Star Wars for it to be part of Star Wars would be the next question that you would ask. Do you have no. to have There's a, a little, yeah. There's whole comic book series yeah. where none of that matters. Like, let, let's say, let, okay, let's go, like, not Old Republic. The Legacy series is um, Cade Skywalker, who is a descendant of Luke Skywalker, and the Sith of Run Rampant. It's led, it's led by, what is it, Lord Kratos or something like that? And there's, like, it's like a, the Sith are basically a big cult, a gang more than a cult at this point. The, the rule of two, two is non-existent. There's factions all over the place, and and the Jedi are just barely scraping by, hiding, running from place to place. Ossus is their big like stronghold at that moment. Mm -hmm. So that was a very in-depth story that was more loved than the Old Republic comic series. So that worked out very well for them, and it was neither the Jedi being led by a prophecy because they were like f prophecy basically was right. the whole was the whole attitude, and there was no rule of two. 
Um, I had another thing that I was thinking with, it's not necessarily prophecy, but let's, let's talk about prophecy in terms of struggling with the future, right? Yoda says, always in motion, the future is right. It's, there's a, we want to know, so what's the deal? And, and I've had, you know, Luke or, or, or Anakin has these visions that come to him in dreams of people that he knows suffering, right? And it, it actually plays into, into his journey where he's trying to avoid that. And the more that that haunts him, the more he, he makes tragic choices in his direction. So is that just a Jedi thing, prophecy? Is it just a Sith thing? Or is there some, uh, you know, does it doesn't matter. I don't know. I guess you well, get to Well, I mean, the Sith had decide. their own prophecy, the Sathari, the perfect Sith that right. would come and, um, you know, like, so technically even the Sith had their own prophecy. I think it's probably, I don't know, the way it's being used, sort of, at least in the movies. Anyway, I can't speak to books and comics, but it seems to be much more of a force power than a faction power. Hmm. Since you have people on both sides that have the prophecy or see visions or right. have some kind of dream upon high to tell them something. So I think it's much more of a force. And again, that comes back around to you have to have space man magic. Right. I do think, though, it plays a role <laughs> in, in, in all magic. fandoms. Okay. I think all fandoms have their element of this, right? Game of Thrones, you've got there's the winter is coming. Something's up. It's ominous. We don't know what it is, but it's coming. Um, I, I don't know. Like, move over to Lord of the Rings. You know, there, there's the, the darkness is returning. We've got to figure this out. There's, there's something there to contend with, some future looming threat that, that comes. So, I mean, I do think it, it plays... Maybe, um, uh, Red, it's kind of you more to your point where... It's part of Star Wars as the setting, as the, as the universe, the, as the, you know, that you're surrounded in, that those things are afoot, that makes it count. But you can probably put together a decent story in the midst of that that isn't necessarily directly related to that. I don't know. Anyone else have anything to say before we skip over to announcements, thank yous, and all that stuff? Yeah, um, one thing. I would like to say... That as a child, my uh, immediate thought of Star Wars was, this looks cool. And then I turned around and went outside to play because I was like five and nobody <laughs> explained to me why a planet was being destroyed and people were, you know, dead. That to me was very annoyed. I'm like, well, that looked cool, but um, that was mean. So I went back outside to play. Well, then episode one comes around as in theaters and I was in like, I don't know, first grade or something like that. And I'm like that looks cool. Can I go? And my dad and uncle are like, are you sure? It's probably going to be a long movie. I'm like, yeah, it looks really cool. And they're like, all right, well, we'd love to take you. So I go as a child in the theaters, knowing there's a story out there that I don't know. I'm watching episode one for the first time and everybody hates Jar Jar. I know, but I was a child and it was in my childhood. And so I, I watched Jar -Jar. this first movie and my immediate thoughts were, this is the coolest movie I've ever seen. And there was a queen who was like 14 years old and I was very young. <laughs> it's a never ending story. Like a, it's like no, Willow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let, let's think about this for a second. As a, as a young girl who was told most of my life, all the things I wanted to do, I couldn't do because I was a girl. You can't play for the St. Louis Cardinals. You're a girl. You can't do this. <laughs> right. You're a girl. All the things I wanted to do, I couldn't do because I was a girl. And then I go into this movie theater and there's Padme Amidala, who is queen of an entire system, who's talking to the Senate. Let's just think for a moment how powerful some of those visuals are for a child for their first time seeing something like that. I know my son was so enamored with Luke Skywalker that all he did for two years was want to dress in black and you wield a green lightsaber. He loved Luke Skywalker so much. It was like me with Padme. And when he found out that his favorite character was the son of my favorite character, he was so thrilled and so loving. And that was the <laughs> thing that like, it, it connected generation to generation. Yeah. Something that I shared with my son that he loved so much. Even now, even though he's not as into Star Wars as he was, even now, if I'm watching it, he'll sit down and he'll just watch and be like, is that one like Luke, Mom? Is that one like Padme? What about this one? He'll come sit on my lap and watch me play because it still is so awesome to him. Mm. So think for just a moment how impactful those visuals are. Like, we've seen them a hundred times, whatever. They don't care. They don't matter to us that much anymore. But the first time, those impact, those visuals, they matter. And so whether or not you think about it at this moment, try to think back to like the first time 
you've seen something like that, how did it impact right. you? Because that can help you encapsulate what does Star Wars mean? Yeah. I think it's amazing the diversity. You know, like you have Elise here who's like the original series was your youth kind of a thing, you know? And here we have Magic who got started on episode one, like in the prequels. I, saw, I just think that's I really cool. I saw the third one, Return of the Jedi, in the movie theater with my mother. Yeah. That's how old I am. <laughs> We will not try to calculate anything. <laughs> Yeah, I just think it's amazing, and like uh, how how di uh, diverse across cultures it is. I was in South Africa, and I was a Star Wars fan, so I just think that's the the coolest thing, you know, how it how it spreads all over the place. Uh, all right, so let's talk about uh, announcements really quick. It sound like AIDS, holy crap! <laughs> it is space. Well, it's Rakul, right? It's Rakul week coming up. Nice little segue there. Uh, so uh, one of the things that they uh, that they made sure to make <laughs> let everybody know, no roadmap is coming out, <laughs> and, not, and not anytime soon. And That's wise. <laughs> very good, yeah. Hey, there's no roadmap. But they were like 5.10.1 is on the PTS right now. 5.10.2 is going to come right after that. And we're supposed to get that patch in a couple of weeks, so just kind of stay tuned. I don't exactly know even what that means. Like, I don't expect there's no story. Well, I put that on the PTS 5.10.1. You they're know, doing, like bug fixes like ESO. on the PTS. ESO so, does the exact same thing. So They'll to put me, that's all weird. Their patches on the on the PTS. So people who are theory, theory crafters, like yes, but our theory win. our if theory they, crafter community is long gone. I know, but <laughs> there are still some because Dolphy still has guides to put up. So yeah, I was gonna say there there is clearly some because we had that leakage of Malgus returning. So I mean, <laughs> there's still some people are but in. That's what ESO does: is people will go in there and whatever changes or balances that they do, they go in there and they play about it so they can figure out what they need to do to right. mitigate or enhance. So that I assume that's why they're doing that because it's kind of like the way the industry is going. To, and that's to, cool. Hey, it's good. Good communication, right? Let us let us see it. So, oh, uh, what about the uh, the event schedule, Elise? Have they um, done any publishing on that? So on the on the same uh, developer er, tracking forum on the um, forums, you know what I mean, where they put up the someone asked, "Is the Gree event supposed to be for two weeks?" Because when it was originally uh, uh, released. At least that's what I caught on Twitter that the dates were originally over um, were longer, and um, Musco said no, that was a mistake, and he republished what the actual dates were. So Rat Ghoul is this week, um, and Gree is February nineteenth to the twenty sixth. So this is your chance to go get um, Doctor Loken for the extended story stuff. <laughs> you haven't got him yet. I have like six tunes. I have that have been one. waiting for this event, and that was enough for me. Go farm I, some I eyeless lids of the eyeless. Oh <laughs> yeah. uh, yikes! Honestly, I, just... I need one thing from that event, just one, and then I like could care less. Yeah, um, I, I RC. I have a hundred percent achievements on that. I've event. been trying to have get been the pet for a year that or two. From the I don't... That's what I need. I need to get that pet, and I need to kill the tunnel lurker with it, and I'm done. One hundred percent. Yeah, I am. Um... Not at legendary on that one, so. Um, but I, I farmed the heck out of that when I first started this game, and I burned myself out, and I'm just kind of like, well, I'll do Eyeless. Yeah, all of these, the, the <laughs> Gree, the, the Rakul, I'm like, oh yay, it's just you know, Bounty Broker Week, uh, the one you know, need a new event, guys. So good recycle, just turn them off. I'd be okay with you, just turn them off. <laughs> I'll be honest. I actually haven't done any of those events in like over a year or two. It's like because I I maxed out their reputations within a couple weeks, and whenever any new one had come out, the only time I ever go and do any of that stuff is because somebody needs help, and I'm happy to help my friends. But yeah, well, if, I have if, no if, interest if in doing it for myself. Going, yeah, get a guild group going, and let's go kill the the uh, Eyeless or whatever. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's I just you guys to all pass on the pet. Thanks. <laughs> oh, that's right. The rat ghoul one. I that's have one undone achievement for that stupid rat ghoul. And that's, uh, I have to blow up on, a, I guess, I guess you infect a hundred people. And then there's a hidden one where you have to infect a thousand people. And I just don't care. <laughs> it's GTN. Go blow up on the GTN. Well, see, but the thing is, is like, you've got people like me who we have guild ships and we have the VIP thing and we have the GTN on our own ship. 
So we'll do anything to avoid being on fleet. Space aids, yes. Yeah, I avoid the fleet at all costs, too. Oh, goodness. So I think that's well, that's an episode, right? Yep, yep. That was the last of our notes, and it is time. So this is the point where I'd like to say thank you. We, the Council of SOTOR, would like to say thank you all for showing up and chit-chatting with us and talking to us, and also for lurking for us. We love you guys. The people who participated, you were fantastic. The people who didn't participate, you were also fantastic, just in a different way. And we would also like to say thank you to our patrons. You all are fantastic. And we often get feedback from them that helps us remember things. And we're like, oh, cool, this <laughs> right? message. Totally forgot about that. Check it out. Brandon Kavanaugh, but, thank you. That <laughs> so works out very nicely. Yeah, we like thank to you. Say, I forgot all about that. You. So I appreciate the tip. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And a small correction from last week. Apparently, I conflated information and said that the petition said that now that Anthem was out, uh, that we wanted our developers back. But the petition itself didn't actually say that. So I did want to correct the record on that point. Um, but otherwise, that brings us to the end of the episode. The Council is adjourned. If you'd like to reach us, you can email, email us at thecouncil at thecouncilswotor.com. Like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash thecouncilswotor. You can find Elise on Twitter at abrown35, Magic Ace at the Magic Ace, and myself at R3DN4 with Sakari at I am Sakari. Also, don't forget our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the Council Sotor, where patrons can catch the articles we're talking about behind the scenes and exclusive backstage access to our after show chat. That's it for this week, guys. That is the sound of a thousand terrible things headed this way. I understand. You are on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of master. What? How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. How can you be on the council and not be a master? Take a seat, young Skywalker. Forgive me, Master.